It's February 8th. Welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramph. Let's kick it off with a little bit of weather. I have a lot of show for, for you guys today, so let's get right into it. It is currently 13 degrees outside. I walked out this morning and I was just like, eh, it wasn't as cold as uh, a couple, the last couple days, but you can expect a lot of those temperatures to pretty much stay around these uh, temperatures with a high of 23 and a low of zero degrees today. Uh, Saturday, you can expect your low to get even lower with a high of seven degrees and a low of negative six. And then we're gonna start seeing some, uh, we going back up to double digits with a high of 11 degrees on Sunday with a low of two degrees Sunday night. But we should be getting, th uh, some things should start warming up by Sunday through Monday. So we'll, Take a good look at that as we uh, get into the week. All right, so Whitefish Mountain Ski Resort, uh, they have uh, four inches of fresh powder in the last 24 hours. So we're probably gonna be seeing some of that snow later on uh, further southeast of Whitefish. But of course, uh, Big Sky Resort had five inches in the last 72 hours. Blacktail had three inches in the last 24, nine inches in the last 72 hours. And Bridger Bowl had uh, two inches in the last 74 hours. But a lot of uh, similar themes with uh, High snowfall in the last 72 hours compared to the last 24 hours. All right, and you can get more information about that from the nationalweatherservice.gov or on the snow.com. All right, let's get into gear for some of the news. Uh, flu is uh, at the highest levels in uh, Missoula. Um, according to a study of the Montana Department of Health and Human Services, which keeps track of flu cases, Missoula County has jumped of 84 new cases in the week of January 26, and it now has 205 total reported cases of the flu. That's the highest in the state, with River Valley County uh, in second at 171 people. Um, P Missoula was also the first place to have someone die from the flu. Kindergarten Allison Eagle speaker died at age six at Community Hospital. Um, Missoula City County Health officials say that it's not uncommon to have a surge in flu during this time. People, you know, back from vacation, people going to and from different places it's just a really easy way for the flu to get spread around um, it's a uh, it's a present that cannot be returned but it can be regifted and then some uh, the the cost for a flu shot is $46 at the Missoula City County Health Department, but there are exceptions for people who are in need. So you can find out more by going to the Missoula City County Health Department. In state news, uh, January 31st, Hel Helena did officially do their annual headcount of homeless folks in crisis. But of course, the recent cold has more than tripled the number of a local Helena homeless shelter. Um, God's Love Homeless Shelter has 60 to 80 people have been coming to the downtown homeless sh shelter since Sunday because of the weather has been so cold. 20 people are usually go down there on average during the regular winter days, but this sudden cold has gripped the east and now is starting to see similar temperatures in the western Montana regions. Of course, God's uh, Hope, uh, God's Love Homeless Shelter has been around uh, for 34 years. This is their 34th year. The shelter has a $350,000 annual budget, um, of which United Way in Helena contributes $55,000. Small grants from Rocky Mountain Development Center and Lewis and Clark um, County also help with the annual expenses. Um, there's always uh, room for more the toilet paper, paper towels, and blankets, and you can donate all those to God's Love Homeless Shelter. In um, national um, news, imagine you come up, imagine uh, th a new line of fashion, but this is a very high functioning kind of fashion where it starts as a turtleneck, but you're able to fold it up into a ski mask. Se it seems like it's a really good idea, but recent reaction to a certain sweater ha that has retailed uh, by $800 Ninety dollars uh, by Gucci range from deep offense to unbelievable that has been deemed unacceptable to begin with, even as some defended it. And here is the picture of that sweater in question. Take a look at it. Many uh, groups are saying that this is a uh, poor attempt at blackface, and uh, Gucci has since recalled and apologized for this sweater. Um, more on the news, the Italian Fashion House says it's going forward, it will look, work to increase diversity and work on turning the incident into a powerful learning moment for the Gucci team and beyond. The shame of face darkening is in association with uh, caricature of black people is part of Amer American history going back centuries. Gucci is far from the first apparel brand to retreat, admitting 
to missteps following acquisition of racist products. And almost a year ago, in January of 2018, H&M apologized for featuring a black child on its website, donning a sweatshirt featuring the words, coolest monkey in the jungle. So those are some of the things that's happening in the news. I'm gonna throw it to, uh, uh, to something a little more lighter. This is, uh, it is Friday, of course, and I'm gonna uh, spoil you guys a little bit earlier this Friday with a uh, flagship Friday video of the week. And then when I come back, I'm gonna be talking about movies that are coming out this weekend with Pre-Critic. Viewer. Discretion. Advised. Candy bars. Harmed in the making of this movie. Gods, please help me. If you, someone you love, or someone you know has a sugar addiction, we can help. Call 1 800 and cat. Don't hesitate, call now, and you will get two therapists. Two for the price of one. Call now. Down. It didn't answer my question. I'm here to help you. That doesn't answer my question, though. I'm a therapist who specializes in candy addiction, and I'm here to help you solve it. Tell me about 
your experiences with Canon. Thank you. Well, I was going to go on a mission with my friends, and then... Do you mind? Do you mind? I'm just going to take this off. Please continue. <laughs> okay, um, well, I was going to go on a mission with my friends, and, well, they, uh, I decided to take time off. And when I took time off, yeah. When I took time off, I uh, it's pretty interesting. I went to a candy coma and I went to the Milky Way and I met a bunny. And he was so nice. He taught me some. He taught me some twigs. It was very fun. Are all your stories uh, based in candy type puns? When I tried to perform one of the. Well, the city council is dishing out some more candy. Uh, let's. Uh, it's time for a little bit of that city council. Um, during city council, they were talking about um, plans during the admin finance talks about paying off TIFs. Uh, the city allocated funds to the mercantile for construction and conservation of the pharmacy building, which we now see a part of the new mercantile hotel that was built up there, Marriott, you know, many mixed culture things. But now the city is moving to approve the uh, the process in which Missoula gets paid. I mean, Missoula is going to uh, put money and pay uh, the bonds back. Um, so here's Alan Buchanan, um, MNR director of the city of Missoula, talks about uh, the pro uh, the uh, what's going on right now. The reimbursement agreement basically is is pretty much our standard development agreement. There are some things in this that are unique because of the nature of the project and because of the requirements of city council in um, um, approving the issuance of a demolition permit. Uh, basically, it requires that this be a five-story mixed-use building housing approximately 20,000 square feet of leasable space for retail businesses and restaurants and approximately 175 hotel rooms. It required right. pres preservation of the pharmacy building. At All right, so uh, that was just a little bit of background. In terms of that, um, the ordinance among the Front Street Urban Renewal District will take into effect um, – as of Wednesday, uh, after which the bonds can be sold, bonds will not be sold and no one reimbursement will be made until the project has received a certificate of occupancy from the city of Missoula and the requested documentation has been provided to MRA, which already has been. And Ellen Buchanan explains a little bit more about the, uh, the money that's going into uh, buying back these bonds. In total is $3,597,844. And breaks down as uh, deconstruction slash demolition a million five oh two six eighty nine pharmacy building uh, preservation three hundred and thirty five thousand seven hundred and forty six dollars some remediation that had not been completed in the building uh, uh, by the previous owners uh, for one hundred and fifty one thousand five hundred. All right, so um, what she's basically saying is that the city invested in uh, $3.5 million in bonds to pay for this, and now the city has to start paying for those bonds back, which will total $3.5 million in bonds, which they plan to reimburse to groups, con contractors, so people can get paid. The first payment is January 21st, of 2020, which will be only interest leading into paying off those bonds. That was... Um, put out through those stiff funds. So Brian Von Lossberg tells how we got to this point. Personally, if you go back, you know, I, I was actually hoping to that there was greater preservation of the entire facade. Um, that didn't happen. We got to an agreement where we got to. There was compromise, um, and uh, and I'm glad that we got that portion of the uh, the preservation. But again, the developer wasn't required to do that. And there's a, a cost-sharing uh, aspect that goes into it in an agreement like this. And I think it's also really important to note that the developer did come back uh, more recently requesting additional uh, assistance in these uh, items, and we said no. The MRA board didn't wind up coming to council, but a couple of council members, including myself, 
uh, were at that meeting and spoke to that meeting. Uh, the MR, MRA board was unanimous in uh, not allocating additional money. Um, you could, I could talk about it for a while. I'll simply say that a, a common theme, theme in that discussion that was shared by myself and, and uh, Mr. Dabari, who was also present, was uh, the inappropriateness of the city serving as a backstop from a risk perspective on these items. So the development. All right. So uh, Brian Von Lossberg says that they want to be able to uh, put in TIF funding to uh, help protect the city of Missoula's interests and not provide a safety net for. Uh, a com to uh, corporations that are building this. In, in um, regards to the hotel, uh, uh, the contractor, the property owner who's built the new hotel on the former Mercantile property and renamed it Mercantile, um, it, it cost them $42 million. And Jesse Ramos asked about the interest behind the bond, and it looks like it's going to be $5.8 million overall in the next five-year term to pay off the bond. But of course, at the end of the meeting, MRA looked to set a public hearing to talk about the budget for MRA, all approved and moved over to the consent agenda. All right, so that's kind of what's going on there, just a, a brief uh, overview of your city council. I have an art clip for you guys, and it's the last, the last time I'm going to be able to play this art clip for you guys, and this is going to be featured at the Missoula Art Museum. So when I come back, I will finally do all your movies that are coming out this weekend, I promise. Hey guys, I'm sure you've uh, probably noticed all those ads that have been um, popping up on the internet and across television. It's about the Lego movie. The Lego movie is coming out this week. And actually, it's probably already out right now, so you guys can uh, pretty much avoid it. It is the season for yet another edition of the Lego movie, which puts um, the father-son dynamic into a brother-sister dynamic. In this imaginative adventure, we bring back the people from previous films, and they build and create along the way to find their way to get along together. The best part of a Lego movie is that a Lego movie won't, won't stop making money, that is. All right, moving on. We got the next movie, What Men Want. What was originally going to be a sequel to Mel Gibson's hit comedy, I assume, that went through a couple places before it was shelved forever. Uh, but with a sequel that has nothing to do with the original Takes Hold, which seems to be very popular among uh, recent movies these days, uh, they're just kind of going to roll with it. And this time they got uh, other people. They got these people in the movie. Um, kind of like Happy Death Day is like uh, Groundhog Day meets Scream. This is basically kind of like what women want, but what men want. And that's pretty much the premise. They just kind of be like, copy, paste, let's just make a movie. What kind, what, kind, what kind of gang can we put in there? It's like, well, what if a guy thinks about this? And the girl's like, what? And then boom, that's, that's your movie. That's basically your movie. All right, moving on. We have a Liam Neeson movie coming out. Who knew? Um, and this is uh, from the Liam Neeson Revenge Library in the Disney Vault comes yet another movie. Cold Pursuit is not only the name of the movie, but the premise. But also the weather is cold. Uh, so whether or not you see a 66-year-old take on a bunch of folks, you will see your typical tropes of a reluctant hero on a quest of revenge for killing his wife or daughter. Insert here, take your pick. But he's in cold pursuit in a cold place. 
uh, against some cold people, but he's a little bit colder in his pursuit of revenge. There you go. There's, there's, there's your movie. It's a Liam Neeson movie. What do you expect? All right. Let's, uh, mm, that's, that's not what I wanted to do. My bad. <laughs> uh, uh, there we go. Sweet. Much better. All right. There I am. Hey, how's it going? Let's talk about some things with MCAT. Uh, MCAT, we, uh, we're a public access television station. Um, if you want to learn more about us, we do a bunch of uh, k uh, educational kid camps. Uh, we're doing a camp during the spring break season. It is Spring Flicks, and if a kid is interested, they can go to this website instead of going to my face, mcat.org, for more information about Spring Flicks. Uh, we just posted an ad on our Facebook page, much like you've seen a bunch of those Lego movie ads, but uh, you're going to be able to see it all across Facebook. It is pretty awesome. And I do have it for you guys that I'm going to show you for you uh, a little bit later um, after I get through a couple social media type deals. If you're interested in uh, finding more about Wake Up Missoula, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. If you look up Wake Up Missoula, you can find me on YouTube, Facebook, and the Twitter. I am a VJ of sorts who kind of tells you what's going on in Missoula, a couple things, a couple events, a couple things. I get guests to come on here. If you're interested in being on the show, you can call us here at the studio, 542-6228, otherwise known as 542-MCAT. You can also email us, mcat at mcat.org, to inquire about being interviewed about an upcoming event, a rally or cause. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And without further ado, here is the premiere of a brand new ad featuring one of our uh, uh, dream teens, Austin Guzzi. Oh, hello. I'm MCAT, and so can you. This spring break between March 25th through the 29th, your kid can join us for Spring Flicks. It's a week-long camp that provides kids 9 to 13 years old with activities and more at your local television station. Go to MCAT.org or the link above to sign up for fun camps. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some events that are happening within the city of Missoula. It's time for your events. It's Winter Clean Commute Day. If you are on the Riverfront Trail, Orange Street underpass, Winter Clean Commute Day is a fun way to celebrate walking, busing, and carpooling even during the chilliest of times. It is free coffee and treats for anyone who wants to make their commute clean on Friday. Um, it's uh, they have some coffee and breakfast treats happening from 7.30 to about 9.30, so you might miss the cut out, cutoff, but it's Muzoon Motion under the Orange Street Bridge in the South Side Riverfront Trail. Uh, they're also having it at Petal Missoula under the Madison Street Bridge, Mountain Line inside the Downtown Transfer Center, uh, ASUM Transportation outside the Music Building on campus. Um, yeah, and those are some of the locations you guys can get free coffee if you haven't already noticed some of that free Sweet, sweet, sweet coffee and treats that they have provided for those who have uh, take alternative transportation besides driving their own. All right, using Windows 10 at the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center, Windows 10 is the most recent version of Microsoft Windows. Um, operating system, and you can learn all about Windows 10 and how to use it. Uh, remember, the, a lot of times the right way to use it is using the window key that's on your keyboard. And if you use that, you, you can pretty much find the menu where it can kind of tell you where you need to know. And that's one of the things that kind of threw me off because when, when I opened Windows 10, it gives you like a whole bunch of like apps popping up and just like, how do I get to the desktop? You just click on where the window line is on the keyboard and that's how you get to the desktop. Anyways, if you want the typical things that happen most mornings here in Missoula, Tiny Tales and Storytime at the Missoula Public Library. Spectrum Discovery Center is doing uh, geology. Your Orange Watercolor back at the Missoula Public Library at 12. Crid Cribbage and Bridge, 1230-ish at the Missoula Senior Center. You got Endeavor doing all sorts of activities and things like after school, but mostly starting at 1.30 in the afternoon and another thing starting at 2.30 afternoon, which involves Legos. Then you got the Teddy Bear Sleepover at the Missoula Public Library. It's 4.30. You can drop off a teddy bear and pick it up on Saturday around 10 a.m. It's really a Adorable, and they, it's their annual teddy bear sleepover. Uh, actually, it's not annual because they've done this before, so it's their popular teddy bear sleepover. They, it, it's, it's for kids who want to like enjoy the uh, the uh, aesthetic of going on a sleepover, but not actually sleeping sleeping over at the library because people at the library they they got lives. <laughs> The seventh annual mini benefit show. Uh, Zootown Arts Community Center is raising some more money. Um, get the first peek at their seventh annual mini benefit art show pieces. The mini series, all measurements are 12 by 12 by 12 inches or smaller, while their mega series boosts a measurement of four feet 
in one or more direction. These masterpieces make a mighty impression that take a second look, dozens of work, and highlights uh, the talents of Missoula artists. Oh, Montana artists, even bigger. All right, CASA's uh, 25th anniversary Light of Hope Gala at the University of Montana. CASA has been celebrating 25 years of giving a voice to the abused and neglected children in our community. The annual Light of Hope Gala is CASA's largest signature fundraiser that includes an evening of music, dinner, and the silent and live auction. And I believe this is going to be at the University of Montana UC Center, otherwise known as University Center Center. And you guys can go there starting at 6 p.m. tonight. But of course, these are some of your late night events. If you guys are going out and about tonight, uh, Dead Hipster is doing a 90s dance party, so if you love 90s music, it's a great time for people my age or older uh, to go to the uh, Dead Hipster 90s dance party or people who are younger who were, weren't even born in the 90s because Wait, they shouldn't be allowed in there if they weren't born in the 90s. Think about it. Okay. Lolo Creek Band at the Sunrise Saloon, Cash for Junkers at Union Club, and then you got Polyrhythmics at the Top Hat Lounge, all those bands and more happening downtown through Missoula events. All right. Let's talk about some things. I got a couple art clips for you guys. I'm going to show you two of them. And this is the newest art clip for you guys. I believe this is at the uh, Clay Studio, and this is The Small and Mighty. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Did you enjoy Small and Mighty from the Clay Studio? Well, you're going to enjoy a whole bunch of events happening for your Saturday. Kicking off your Saturday, you got your options in terms of winter markets. Orchard Homes is doing their own winter market tour till the end of March, and it starts Saturday 9 to 1 p.m. through every Saturday till March. Um, it's at Orchard Homes Community Life Center. It's that giant barn off of, of Reserve Street. You can't miss it. Orchard Homes winter market. But if you like the old school winter market, you go to Missoula Senior, Senior Center between 8 a.m. and 1 p.m. You can enjoy some live music, some cured meats, some cheeses, some baked breads, all sorts of stuff. Things that you, you know, like aren't necessarily farmed or garden, but they're pretty much um, Montana made. All right. Chinese New Year at uh, Missoula Martial Arts Academy. It's the year of the boar. Um, it's Missoula Martial Arts Academy is doing a kind of a demo thing for all people who want to start a little bit of karate uh, or martial arts. Sorry, I think it might be different. It's always different, but it's yoga, kempo, arnis, and tai chi. You can join enjoy in all those. It's Missoula Martial Arts Academy starting at 10 a.m. tomorrow and it's free. It's kind of like one of those introductory classes to celebrate the year of the boar. Trekker Kids at Traveler's Rest State Park um, making tracks. Traveler's Rest State Park is a uh, Great place to go to learn about history, Lewis and Clark type history. Her kids is back for the from the winter hiatus in, with exciting education activities every other Saturday from 11 to noon. This week they join their friends at Missoula Parks and Recreation to pa to practice your snowshoeing skills and investigate what other creatures might have walked through the snow at Traveler's Rest State Park. Also happening um, that afternoon is the MCAT Saturday drop-ins. If your kid is between the ages of 9 and 13, they can enjoy some um, stop animation, some live action movies. Just a good way to get involved with cameras and video stuff, movie making, that kind of deal. And they can come here any Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. It's only $10 or it's $5 for half day. Open figure drawing. It's going from kid to all the way 
open figure drawing at Mizzou Art Museum. It's 18 plus. It's non-instructed. It's basically an open figure drawing at the Zach, and this is going to be happening uh, Saturdays, uh, every first and third Saturday until the end of April. Uh, Zach will host on first and third Saturdays. The Dirty Sexy uh, Chocolate Show is happening at the Wilma. It's their early showing. They have an evening showing at 10 p.m., but they also are doing it. So back for its fourth ridiculous year, the Dirty Sexy Chocolate Show is here to scratch all your entertaining interests for one at only uh, Sexy Cabaret meets Hilarious Cooking Show, complete with singing, dancing, original music, chocolates, and obscure amounts of chocolate. Join Chefy Plants as uh, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of uh, words that say sexy in there. Uh, they prepare an actual chocolate dessert on stage, and it's just kind of like a performance um, baking thing. And you get to eat it afterwards. That's kind of the deal. Cool. All right, moving on. They got the sweetheart dance. This is uh, for uh, fathers and daughters. Um, this is for young. Uh, this is a semi-formal sweetheart dance. And girls and their father figures will enjoy music, dancing, snacks, and more right at the YMCA. It's $25 to $35, depending upon your membership. Um, and, yeah, it's just a, a dance for fathers and daughters. And it starts at 6 p.m. at the uh, YMCA. Men's basketball um, at the... Uh, it's going to happen against Eastern Washington. It's going to be a University of Montana game um, happening at the Dahlberg Arena at 7 p.m. tomorrow night. B men's basketball will be taking on Eastern Washington. And if you guys are interested in doing anything else happening for your Saturday, there's a whole bunch of things happening Saturday night. They got a comedy, Mary Houlihan, me and Jack at the Roxy. They got Valentine's Tango Night at the Downtown Dance Collective. Narcotics Anonymous meeting at the University of Montana starting at 8.15. Absolutely with Chris Moon's DJ music. Karaoke at Lolo Hot Springs. Comedian Mary Houlihan, another showing at the Roxy at 9 p.m. if you missed the 7 p.m. showing. The the Dirty Sexy Chocolate Show has their late showing at 9 p.m., not 10 p.m. Uh, Jones Zen Band is at the Union Club. And finally, AJ Fullerton Band is going to be at the Top Hat Lounge. All this and more, MissoulaEvents.net. And you can learn more about that. All right, what else do I need to say before I go? Um, MCAT lo uh, live streamed a couple days ago from uh, the um, the lo Mountain Line Transfer Center about new electric buses that will be uh, revving up their engines here in the city of Missoula within the next six months. So we'll be able to see a whole bunch of new electronic buses. Looking forward for um, city bus travel. So Missoula has invested and. Um, put in to um, new buses. So that's going on there. Um, let's see. I can't think of anything else I want to mention. I just want to say thank you guys for joining me and for Wake Up Missoula. I'm Skyramp. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Mm -hmm.